<clears throat> Today we're going to look at compound probability. Sometimes I call it and probability because it's specifically referring to one thing and another happen. So uh, I have a compound probability when I have multiple events and I'm looking for specific outcomes in each event. I need something to happen in each event. So I need both of those things to occur. It's not like when we were looking at before where it was either or, either a red or a blue marble that I was drawing from the bag. Um, I need both things to happen. An example would be I need to draw a red and a blue. So um, that complicates things a little bit more because I don't know how many ways, different ways I can get the desired outcome to happen. And it's even harder to know um, what the total possible outcomes are. So how are we going to figure that out? One way is to use an area model. An area model only works when there are two events, um, but it's pretty easy from there. I'll show you why it only works from two events, um, and we will see here. Here's an example of compound probability. I'm going to take this spinner and spin it twice. What's the probability that I get a red and a blue? in my two spins. I want a red and a blue. So um, if you were thinking of it uh, as we were looking at it last time with the or probabilities, um, you might think, oh, okay, red, that's a one out of four chance, and blue, that's a one out of four chance. So um, maybe to get a red and a blue, then I can add them together like I was before, and that's a one-half chance. That seems a little high. Um, why does that seem a little high? Maybe it doesn't to you. Well, let's check this out. What if I wanted to get a red, a yellow, a blue, and then a green? Well, that would be one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth. Um, that would be 4 out of 4, 100%. Am I 100% going to get a red and then a blue and then a yellow and then a green um, in four consecutive spins? So this is clearly not the correct answer. Uh, we'll see why in a moment when we make the area model. When we're looking at probability, we know we want desired outcomes over total possible outcomes. But how do I know all the total possible outcomes of two spins? Well, one way we're going to make an area model. So um, the first thing we're going to do is put spin one up here. We've got two events. Remember I said area models only work if I have two events, and that's because of this. We've got spin one and spin two here. So those are our two events, and then what we're going to do is put every possibility of spin one up here. So that would be red, blue, yellow, or green up here. And then we're going to go down here for spin two. What are all the possibilities for spin two? Well, there's red, blue, yellow, and green. Then we're going to make it nice little square here. I do my best on my electronic writing thing. And then we're just going to go through and bring spin one down. Red, 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 red. Blue, blue. And so on. So what I've done is brought down each one of the possibilities for spin one. And let me break this up. And then I'm going to go over here for spin two and bring over all the possibilities for spin two. So red, 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 red. Blue, 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 blue. So what you can see here is a list of all the possibilities. This is everything that could happen if I spin the spinner twice. So you could see each event with spin one listed first and spin two listed second, this is the possibility. A red and a red, 
a blue and a red, yellow and a red, green and a red. Red and a blue, blue and a blue, yellow and a blue, green and a blue. This is every single possibility that could happen. So here, uh, when it says, what's the probability of a red and a blue? Well, we'd have to put desired outcomes over total possible outcomes. What's our desired outcome? Red and a blue. Let's search for a red and a blue. Here's a red and a blue. That's red and spin one and a blue and spin two. Are there any more red and a blue? Here's one. Here's a blue, a blue in spin one and a red in spin two. So there are two. I don't see any more. So that's two desired outcomes over all the possible outcomes, which is how many? Well, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. That's 16 possible here. There's 16 possible. So two out of 16 is one out of eight. There's the probability that I get a red and a blue. Well, what if it had said down here, what if I cared what order it came in? I could figure that out from the area model too. What if I said, what's the probability I roll a red on the first and then a blue? A red and then a blue I needed in that order. Well, there's only one of those because this one is a blue and then a red. Red and a blue, so that would be one out of 16 um, if I cared about the order. This one, I don't care about the order, so it's these two. Um, and this one I did, so I have 1 out of 16. So, in conclusion, I have a compound probability when I have multiple events, and I'm looking for a specific outcome in each event, and I need both of those things to occur. That's a compound probability. I can use an area model uh, to find that probability when I have two events, two and only two, because this is the only way it works. I can't put a third probability a third event over here or anything like that. So two events, I put event one and all its possibilities on top, event two and all its possibilities on the side, bring down all these possibilities, bring over all these possibilities, and then you have a list of everything that could happen. So you find the ones that you want, put that in as your desired, and then all of the total possible goes on the bottom as your total possible outcomes. That is area model for finding a compound probability.